Hi, my name's Matt from The Last Drop of Ink and in this video I'll be taking you through Google Calendar, how to set it up, how to create events, how to create repetitive events and how you can share calendars between different members of your team. So that's enough of me talking and we're going to be jumping over to my screen now. So I've jumped over to my desktop now and I've come to google.co.uk and in the top right hand corner I'm going to click on sign in. Now if you don't have a Google account um, then there's a link on the left hand side that you can create a free account. Um, I'm just going to quickly, quickly log in uh, with my credentials and we're going to come back to the same page where I was before however that you can see that I'm logged in on the right hand side and from the on the top there's an option called more and then if you then choose calendar or it may already be in your top header navigation but in this case it's in the more menu so I'm going to choose calendar okay now we're going to go straight into the calendar however if it's the first time you uh, are actually using Google Calendar now I did grab a screenshot of this when I was um, setting it up on this account and you'll be presented with a screen like this where you can verify your name uh, surname the country where you are and the time zone and obviously make sure you choose the right time zone otherwise the calendar could be out by many many hours okay so let me move that out of the way now Google Calendar very very straightforward um, it's exactly why I use it it's very very straightforward and it's also very very powerful I'll give you a quick overview now uh, that by default you come into the weekly view but you quite easily be a day, month, or four days uh, agenda. Uh, personally, I prefer the week layout. seems to make good sense for me. Now, if I want to move to next week, I can use these arrows here to go forwards and backwards, and you'll see that I'm progressing down the calendar um, table here on the right on the left as I move down, and again, I can move back, and you'll see today it's got a square box around it. Okay, now to create an event, really, really straightforward. Uh, let's pick on Friday and maybe I'd like to create an event. Like so, click create an event, there's an event. It's really that straightforward. If I'd like to create an event which has maybe got a little bit more information in there, um, if I choose edit event um, and a proper event, like so maybe I want to change the time for longer maybe I want to start it sooner I can do just by changing these options in here okay now there are some advanced features and I'll come to those in a few moments time you can specify a location I'm just going to use Bristol for example in this one and um, you could write a uh, a full-blown description maybe it's maybe some meeting notes which you need to put in there beforehand okay you can also choose a color um, maybe that your actions list is yellow um, and maybe um, red is an important meeting um, which you cannot miss for example uh, you can also set reminders and again the, uh, uh, Google Calendar is very very powerful um, as in that you can set a pop-up notification but that doesn't work if you're not signed into Google Calendar. Um, however, the email notifications are fantastic. And what I typically do is that I uh, leave the 10 minute reminder before, but I'll also set a reminder for one hour before. And again, you could set another email reminder for maybe um, 12 hours before if you wanted to. Okay, but it could be weeks um, uh, or minutes, hours, days or weeks. Okay. Um, now there are some other options on here and I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore these down at the bottom. Okay, and we're gonna come to the right hand side. Now just like other calendar products, you can invite other attendees to come and um, join you at this meeting and Google will send out a notification to them. Okay. Um, and you do that very very simply as uh, entering their email address here on the right hand side and clicking add. Now you can allow them to modify the event. You can allow them to invite other people if you wish. And you can they, and by default they can also see the other um, people who have been invited to the meeting too. And if I click add okay then you'll see my other email address appear in the list and if I now click save uh, Google Calendar will ask me whether I'd like to send in the invitations or not and again that would be via email um, because I don't want that I'm just going to choose do not send in this case um, and again there if you can see that I've actually made a slight mistake I've managed to get the two meetings on at the same time so I'm actually just going to click I just left click and hold on that event and move it to a more suitable time and when I let go of my um, mouse then Google obviously because there was somebody else in that meeting um, we ideally like to notify them 
and um, in this case I'm going to choose send and in the background I'll receive an email notification um, from myself um, sorry there's two egos here we're looking at one one of my Google accounts here and I'm also using my other Google account which we'll get to in a moment um, and um, the, Google will have contacted me via email to say that that event has been changed. Um, is that okay with you? Um, and to accept the changes. Now, the really, really cool feature of Google Calendars is that you can very, very easily share calendars between people. And that's really, really important. Um, for example, if you're a line manager and you have a task that you're which you would like your member of staff to do, Okay, you can add their calendar um, to yours so you can see when it would be suitable or for you to set um, events in their calendar obviously with their agreement um, whether they would attend or not and it's really really straightforward um, and I'm just going to add my other um, Google account in here. I'm going to press enter. A new uh, um, a window appears, and again, I can add other people to this. And again, that's really, really important and really, really easy if you've got numerous members of staff in your team. And I'm now going to click send invite. Now, I'm just going to jump across to my other screen, and I've been and received the invitation. Um, now that email's been and come through. I'm going to show you my other Gmail account, and this is um, especially for the line managers to say where they may not want to share specific events with uh, their members, of the staff, or their team. Um, there is an option here saying see only free stroke busy and hide details, and that's exactly what I'm going to do um, for when I'm sharing um, this account for, for this demonstration. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and click add person. Now I could either wait for Google to, to update my calendar or I'm just going to right click and hit reload or you could press F5 on your keyboard um, and in a moment you should see uh, the calendar updates and the calendar has now been an updated with my other accounts uh, calendar um, hence all these orange events which have now appeared with stripy lines through them um, you can see the, the events which I've been working on my calendar and it's now shown in my other calendar, the calendar which we're looking at right now. Now, uh, going back to the, the final point which is that you can create an event which is not only repeatable but you can also include other members of your team to it. So, repeatable event like so um, and what I can do is now set it to repeat so I'm going to tick the repeat button here in the background I'm going to set it to repeat on a Friday morning uh, on a Friday um, at 10 o'clock and then I'm also going to set it to finish after six weeks okay or after six occurrences so it's good so the summary is it's going to happen weekly on Fridays for six times and now I'm going to click done okay I'll invite the uh, other attendee in a few moments okay so there's our repeatable event if I now move through the events then you'll be able to see that the repeatable event is on every Friday like so um, and then once the six weeks is over it's been and disappeared okay so I'm now going to come back uh, to this week and maybe I want to add a member of staff to this now it's very very straightforward is that if you add their email address to the um, as, a, as a guest and then click add then uh, they'll now appear in here and because we share calendars what you'll be able to see is and again I'm going to invite the, this person to all the events and send the notification okay and you'll now see that my calendar um, so the calendar which you're looking at right now is in blue and my other calendar my, on my main account is that you'll now see that I'm also marked as busy on there and obviously I can accept or decline that meeting and you'll now see that for that meeting is now shared between um, two people myself and my also ego um, in my calendar So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope I've been able to show you how to create a calendar event, how to move uh, an event, how to create a recurring event, how to set up notifications for those events, and crucially, how to share calendars between different people, um, which could be your members of your team. So, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, press the like button, and don't forget to press the subscribe button at the top of this video. Thank you very much. Cheerio!